All right, this is chapter six. Uh, chapter six is really where we begin to do something that is of importance. All the other stuff is important, but, you know, this is kind of important. Okay, got that? Okay, everything's important, darn it. Know it all. But this one is special. Yeah, this is special important. Actually, three and five I said were probably the most important. Well, this is more important than the most important. How's that sound? Actually, now this is just stuff where we finally start to understand object-oriented. The reason I say this is important, I was answering an email from a student very recently in my advanced class. This says, I really don't understand that whole entire object-oriented thing. <laughs> well, guess what this chapter is about? This chapter is about that object-oriented thing. So, kind of got to understand this. It's like you can be selling a cell tower or something. Yes, exactly. By the way, the guy I was telling you about the cell towers did finally come back and get his associates, bachelors, and masters now. So he's doing good. But oh, point is, he always said he wished he had finished his degree first. But I, I gotta ask you a question later. Okay. All right. Um, so object oriented. We're gonna talk about that. We're gonna talk about UML. We're gonna talk about our first object oriented program. Talk about the whole public private. We have talked about public private already. We're gonna talk about that some more. Talking about a driver class, I'm not talking about driving as a car, but a driver class. Calling methods, object methods, this. We're going to talk about this. We're going to talk about how this, see if this is even important. You can't live without this, but sometimes this is kind of nice. But we're going to talk about that. Some default values, uh, return statements, void. We're just going to talk about all kinds of handy dandy stuff. All right. It says, in the olden days, the standard programming technique was called procedural programming. You did this, and then you did the next thing, and then you did something else. That worked out good. But, um, you know, uh, it's kind of like, uh, you all remember Henry Ford. What, did, what was Henry Ford known for? Cars. Cars. What did he do? What did he do that was... Yeah, but... I mean, he revolutionized, like, the way it how were they built? The assembly line. Remember that? He was the first one to bring in the assembly line. St procedural programming is okay. You build car one. Now you build car two. Now you build car three. That's that's not right. That's where the whole assembly line kind of changed that whole way. You install tires all day long. But you you get good at it. So you can install a tire quicker than anybody else. You install a whatever something else all day long, and you get really good at it. So what ends up happening is this car is now made in record time. Okay. Did you ever do, like, I had to build a dresser the other day. Cheapy dresser from Walmart. You know, you know good quality that stuff is. I bought, I, bought, I bought three of them. They come in a box. It was funny because I wanted three, and I went to the first Walmart, and they had two that were sealed, the one that was open. And naturally, I had to call the, the high-paid worker in Walmart. I said, dude, I need three. And you only got two here. Here's the other. That's all I have for today. He says, yeah, I got two and one that's not open. Do you have any? No, nope. uh, this is all I have for today. It's like, okay. I says, are all the parts in this box that's open? I would have to totally open the box, assemble the entire unit to tell you if all the parts are in the box. I'm like, what an idiot. <laughs> My point was, you know, I, so I ended up going to another Walmart to get the third dresser. So I have three of the same dressers from two different stores. Then I built the first one. That was, you think I, the first one probably took the longest. Don't you think it would? Yep. The second one, man, by the time I got to the third dress, I was a flying through the, I, I don't even, didn't even glance at the instructions because I didn't know how to do it. Okay. It's kind of what procedural programming is. I mean, you do this, then you do this, then you do this. But it's good. I mean, there's, there's definitely a use for it. But object oriented takes that and makes it even better. Okay. It says, the emphasis of procedure was on the procedures or tasks that made it up. Okay. I remember back when I was in the Air Force, I was a jet engine mechanic, and uh, we had to go out and work on different things. Like, I worked on AWACS engines for a while. And whenever there was a problem, we got the technical order out. It was basically a big old flow chart. Engine noise. And you'd follow it. You know, is this blah, blah. And you go through the whole list, checking each thing. I was, you know, going, it was a procedural thing. Do this, then do this, then it. And sooner or later, it fixed the problem. Okay. And this, you would design your programs about what you thought were the key procedures. Today, we do something different. We do it on something that's called object-oriented programming. Okay? 
Oh, funny story. I was grading an email today, uh, assignment from someone. I don't remember. It was a job assignment. I don't remember if it was from this class, another class, what. But someone said, I'm having a hard time with this assignment, whatever assignment it was. And it says, I've been searching everywhere for information, and this is the closest I could find to it. Tell me if it's correct. I open it up, and it was written in C++. I'm like, this is the wrong language. <laughs> I'm like... <laughs> Obviously, you weren't even attempting to write your own program. You're just attempting to find a program from somewhere and turn it in. But I'm like, no, this is the wrong language. But it was... Wow, I just thought that was, that was funny. This guy might be listening to this someday. He might be saying, oh, crap, he's talking. I remember who it was, but that's all right. All right, today, says the most popular technique is called object-oriented. Hence the most importantness of this chapter. Okay, with object oriented, instead of thinking about procedures, you think about the things in your problem. Okay, the things are called objects. Okay, so instead of figuring out the different procedures at building a car, we think of a car in general. The entire car is a thing. Okay, all right. So an object is a set of data which identifies the current state of the object and the behaviors. All right, let's look at some examples. So we could have an employee, okay? So human entities could be employees or customers or students. Physical objects could be things like cars in the traffic flow, aircraft in the air traffic control system, electronic components in the circuit board design. Mathematically, it could be ports on a coordinate, complex numbers, time. It could be all kinds of different stuff, okay? Car objects in the traffic flow, what do you think some of the data that could be of a car object in a traffic flow? So I'm going to do the teaching today, and I'm going to drive home. Okay? So what do you think some of the data could be related to my car in a traffic flow situation? Weather, other people on the road. Could be weather. Could be the amount of traffic. Could be speed. How fast are you going? Dis you know, speed, distance. So there could be a lot of data involved in it. And methods. Am I stopping? Am I starting? Yeah. Am I turning? Am I drunk? <laughs> stuff like that. Is Terry on the road? Okay, stuff like that. So there's a lot of different stuff. Okay? Benefits of it. Programs are more understandable. Okay? You don't think of just one little procedure. My job is to put the widget in the hole. But instead you think of the whole, what is that widget doing? Why is that widget going in the hole? Maybe the widget doesn't really need to go in the hole. I mean... If your job, it's one of those things, you know, I was watching an uh, episode of Undercover Boss the other day. Anyone ever seen that show? Yeah. I like that show. And I was, it was like six or eight episodes ago, but I watched it just the other night. And the girl said, you know, I put in a, a um, whatever, a suggestion to do things. And the boss like, wow, I never saw your suggestion. So the point is, you know, with procedure, I mean, you really don't get to look at the big picture. You look at one little area. You don't really know. Another example of that is uh, when I was in the military, again, I worked as a jet engine mechanic. Uh, I worked in the uh, jet engine shop in Zweibrücken, Germany. Zweibrücken was named after the city called Two Brooks, you know, Two, two Bridges, basically. So, But when I was there, we had something called the Keel Wide Duct. I was an F-4 mechanic. I don't know, somebody, you know an F-4 fighter is, F-4 Phantom, they were popular years ago. But it's something called the Keel Wide Duct, which bled air off the engines to use to heat and cool the aircraft, to do a bunch of stuff with it. But our book said, if that duct is cracked, you throw it away. So guess what we did when those ducts when they were cracked? Our procedure said, duct is cracked, you throw it away. That's what we did. We throw them away all the time. Well, crack, what are doing? Throw it away. Some dude walked into our office and said, why is there a whole pile of them ducts in that trash? We're like... Because they're cracked, they throw them away. He goes, why don't you weld them? Dude, you don't understand. It says, if they're cracked, you throw them away. So he put in a suggestion, hey, why don't you weld those things? He made $16,000. It's like, darn it. But our procedure was crack, throw it away, where he was looking at the bigger picture. You know, it kind of sucked, but, you know. It's like, darn it. He wasn't even in our office, and he made money off our office. I was pissed. The benefits are you understand the whole project, the whole program, okay? So since people tend to think about problems in terms of objects, it's easy for people to understand them, understand the program when you split it into objects, okay? So if I was going to write a program about a bank, you probably could understand where an account would be because we've all used them before. 
Now, you can understand different things that would have to happen to it. Some of the methods we can use in an account, maybe we could deposit money, withdraw money. So it would be easy to think because it's something we could wrap our minds around. Okay? Through error, fewer errors as well. So since objects provide encapsulation, encapsulation is kind of an important thing. It's called isolation for the data. Okay? It's harder for the data to get messed up. Okay? Um, you ever seen those things that always, you know, it's got a piece of tape on it? If you open it, you void the warranty. Well, they do that because they don't want you screwing with the stuff on the inside. They want you to, like, plug it in and use it, but don't screw with the stuff on the inside. Same thing. That's what encapsulation is. You know, for the outside world, they don't need to know how it works. It's like, okay, I have a Chevy Volt out in the parking lot. Parking lot. I really don't know how it works. I get in, I push the button, I drive. Is enough. So there's quite a bit of isolation between me and the workings of the car. Okay. Do I need to know how the car functions? Not really, but I was reading up on how the engine works and everything. But do I really need to know how it works? No. I'm, it's, the, the functions of the car are encapsulated. In other words, they're broken, kept away from me, the normal user, so I don't screw them. Can you just imagine if I had all these dials and buttons and all kinds of stuff, now it's just randomly hitting stuff? Who knows what my car would be doing? Okay. So, fewer problems since they provide encapsulation. It's harder for it to get messed up. Harder for it can to screw with it. Okay. So we could have our data and our methods all inside of an object class. Then we interface that. We hit the button, you know, so I hit the start button, I hit the brake pedal and the gas and use the doors, but that's about all I do on my car. I don't need to mess with the stuff under the hood. It's kind of funny because uh, uh, ever since I uh, made E6 in the military way back when, at that point I decided I'm never going to work on a car again. I was going to outsource all that to other people. But I sold a car once, and the guy says, well, let me look under the hood. I'm like, cool. I've never even looked there myself. So it was like, <laughs> I, never, I never opened it. So it was like, you know, was, I don't know. My car now, the other day I went to look for the gas, ta gas tank. Couldn't find it. You know, I've never put gas in my car yet. Well, so. Let's see. I've had it for November, December, January. I've had it for four and a half months now. I haven't put gas in it yet. It's pretty good. Is this the Prius? No, this is my Volt. Yeah, but I'm going to Houston this weekend. Right, no way I'm making it there on one charge. <laughs> so I'm going in my Prius this weekend, so I'm going to have to use gas. It's not, in a gas not, not a gas tank, it's a gas bladder. Yes, it's a, yes, the Prius has a gas bladder. Yes, I, I ran out of gas in like three times. I had to have I someone come bring me gas once. It was, wow. yes, it was pretty bad. Yes, <laughs> you run out of gas all the time. Hey, the cool thing about my car, my Volt, when you run out of gas, it starts... The gas, when you run out of electricity, it starts the gas. When you run out of gas, it saves some leftover battery to get you to the gas station. It says, I think it says three to five miles worth of reserve battery just to get to it. And it says the navigation will automatically turn on and show you to the nearest gas station. Nice. I can imagine people listening to these recordings saying, what the heck are they talking about? What do you say now? Yes, and then it brings on the reserve gas to get you. <laughs> You're really a dummy. You really need to get gas now. <laughs> oh, sorry for people listening to this. Okay, let's continue on. All right, so a class now is a description for a set of objects. Okay, so we have a bunch of objects. There's different things we can do to them. Okay, that's what a class is. We've worked with classes so far. Really, the programs we've written so far are single files. They contain maybe some data, some methods, some different functionality. Okay. So the next slide, note the three computers in the conveyor belt and the manufacturing blend. Three computers resemble objects, and the specifications document resemble a class. The specification is the blueprint. It lists the, the components and describes. Think of the, the physical memory the, the, for a class of description for when we say the object is an instance of a class. All right, let's continue on. All right. So up here we have the specifications for a computer. This is kind of like um, that, that stupid whatever bookshelf or dresser I was buying. Specifications for it, and then they, they, they pump out three of them. Okay. On this one here, so we got three different computers. These are computer objects. These are instances of the computer object. Okay. 
And the specifications are all the stuff that pertain to the computer. So that would be all the requirements of it. That would be the object itself. Then we can make instances of it. Okay. So like you design something, then you mass produce them. It's kind of what we're talking about here. Okay. So a class is a description for a set of objects. Description consists of the list of variables and the list of methods. So the variables that pertain to the class and what can we do with them. Okay. All right. Classes are defined as two different types of variables. We have instance and class. We're going to talk about each one of them. Okay. And also, classes can define two types of methods. Instance methods and class methods. So far, we've only used class methods. We haven't used instance methods yet. Okay. Instance methods, instance variables are more common than class variables and class methods. We'll focus on instance variables. Uh, and then we'll go to chat the class ones a little bit later on. Okay. Even though we've already used them already, you just don't realize that. Okay. All right. So instance variables, okay, they specify the type of data that the object can store. So what can we store with this thing? Okay. Uh, I'm trying to think. What do we do? You guys wrote a program about a password. You stored the password. You got input for the password. So the data, the, the instance you received was the password. Okay? Easy enough. So, for example, if you have a class of computer objects, it might contain something like hard disk size, maybe amount of memory, could be processor type. So those could be all the different instance variables. Okay? So if I had multiple instances of a computer object, could I have different hard drive sizes on each instance? Sure, I could. Could I have different memory on each instance? Sure, I could. Okay. Okay. The instance methods specify the behavior. Maybe I could print specifications. Maybe I could boot up the computer, or I could, you know, do something to it. So what can I do to it? Okay. All right. Now, it says notice term, instance, an instance variable, and instance method. Okay. Reinforces the fact that instance or instance methods are associated with a particular instance of an object. Your next program for Chapter 6, at least, depends on which class you're in, but if you're listening to this and you're in this specific class, your Chapter 6 program is about cats. Anyone here like cats? If you don't like cats, well, you're going to hate cats at the end of this program. But you have to write a program that has instances of cats. You can have multiple cats you're going to have to do stuff with. Okay. All right. Okay. So, it says, for example, each computer has its own different hard drive size. All right. Uh, it says, this contrasts with the class variable and class methods, which we've been using before. That's all we've been using so far. So, it's a little bit different. For example, we have the pie class, the round method, all that kind of stuff. We're going to talk more about that later on as well. All right, now let's talk about this class diagram, okay? UML, I always call it universal markup language. It's also known as unified modeling language. It's actually known as both. It's one of those deals like um, BNC connector. Anyone ever seen a BNC connector in networking? It's, uh, it's used for thin neck cabling. It used to be quite popular, not really used much anymore. Um, the name of BNC stands for anybody? British Naval Connector or Bayonet Nut Connector. It's really, they're both legal names for it. It's like totally illegal. So it just really depends which one you're referring to. It's kind of kind of weird. All right. So UML, Unified Markup Language or, or Universal Markup Language or Unified Modeling Language. Okay. It's a dia, diagrammatic. Wow. That's like a Scrabble word there. Hey, I played Words with Friends the other day. I used all my letters. I got like 35 bonus points. It said, oh, you played a uh, whatever. Bingo on Scrabble or something it was called. I don't, I don't know what it's called. Yeah, it was called Bingo. Yeah, that's what it was. I, I'm just winning that game. So if you want to lose, just challenge me. You'll lose. I don't know what means Scrabble player. Yeah, yeah. You probably cheat. No. <laughs> okay. All right. So it's a diagrammatic methodology for describing classes, objects, and the relationships between them. You know what's awesome? They actually have software that uses this, that you can actually design these in UML diagrams, and they will automatically write the software for you. It's pretty awesome. So, All right. This is widely accepted software industry as a standard for modeling this stuff. Okay? You guys aren't going to use it. That's all right. All right. Here's a UML for a mouse class. All right. 
Our class name will be at the top. So what's the name of our class here? Mouse. Very good. We have some attributes or variables. So our mites, we're going to have an age, weight, and a percentage of growth rate. The age would be an integer. Makes sense. Because we're not going to say they're two and a half. They're just one or two. Okay. Weight, that would be a double because there could be 2.2 ounces or whatever. Okay. And percentage of growth rate would be double as well because you might want to grow by a certain percentage. Okay. So all those are different variables that pertain to our mice. All right. And some of the operations or methods we can do on them, they can grow. We can display the values. We could also set the growth rate. So the bottom, the methods, are the stuff that we can do to the variables, okay? Or to the mice in general, okay? So far, so good? All right. Here's our first object-oriented class. It's the mouse.java class. All right. It says, this class models a mouse for a growth simulation program. Okay. We have our class. Got some variables up here. Up here at the top, we got age, weight, and percentages of growth rate. All right. Now, age is an integer. Age of a mice in days. We have weight, which is the double. Now, we're automatically giving this one a value. Okay? And so what's happening is we're, we're declaring a variable called age, and we're assigning it a value. We could have done it on separate lines, or we could do it all on the same line. Okay. See we're using private, is that because we're going to have multiple mice? Yeah. Okay, well, let's talk about that for a second. The whole public-private thing, when you're working with object-oriented, you want to use, for the variables, you want to use private all the time. What that means is, we haven't got there yet, but we're going to cover that in a minute, but pro with private, it means these variables can only be manipulated from inside the mouse class. So if I had a savings account class, for instance, or a checking account class, for instance, obviously I would have a variable for balance. Do you all agree? I probably want to keep track of my balance. Okay? It would be nice if I could add and subtract from only with inside my savings account or my checking account. It would be kind of bad if someone could randomly change my balance. Don't you agree? So you want it to be private so it can only happen from inside of the checking account class. Okay? Now... You wouldn't want someone to be able to manipulate this data from outside the mouse class. I mean, you would, but you want them to go through the proper procedures to do it. Like with my checking account, obviously I want to put money in it or get money out. But how do I do that? Well, I go through the proper procedures. I make a deposit or make a withdrawal. The proper procedures are maybe I could kill a mouse. I don't know. Or grow a mouse. <laughs> or have birth for a mouse. Okay. Oh, yeah. All right, so, yeah, private, we're going to talk more about that, but that's kind of, that's called the access modifier. All right. All right, and we also got double percentage of growth rate. It's going to, now this one here, so we defined it, declared the variable, but we didn't give it a value yet. We're going to talk more about that later as well. Now, we have some comments in here. Now, you notice um, we have a decent prologue at the top. <clears throat> some people <clears throat> might want to get this right. Actually, quite a few people listening to this recording might want to watch this. Um, <laughs> tell me what the program does. Just so you know what your name is. Yeah, I always think it's funny because I always want your name inside the prologue. It's always funny because there's always a student. No, it hasn't, actually, it hasn't happened like almost a year now where someone copies a program from someone else and forgets to change it. I actually had an assignment where the students had to uh, make a program that would pop up their name. They click a button, it'll pop up. Hi, my name is Ken Dewey. Okay. Well, it was inside the program. It was hard coded with your name. Well, someone got a program from someone else and turned it in. So they turned the program from they got from somebody else and you click the button and says, Hi, my name is Billy Bob, whatever. <laughs> somebody else's name. I'm like, oh. So you forgot to change the name. Maybe they couldn't figure out how to change it. That could have been, could be. All right. So there's our instance variables. Now we also have now, this whole divider thing, you know, if you read the style document, it talks about all this stuff. That whole divider thing is kind of like, it keeps it separate. It's kind of like when you write a document. Do you ever write a paper? You put like a paragraph, then you like hit enter, and you got a little bit of blank. Why, do, why is there a blank space there? So you can see it's separate. Do you ever go to a restaurant? Can you imagine in a restaurant if every single item they sold was single, single spaced all the way down the list? 
I mean, I want to know what the appetizers are, or the dessert, or whatever. So they separate it out. The whole point of this stuff here is to keep your program separated. Oh, this is the variables. Oh, now we got something else going on down here. Where it's all just one line. Yeah, one big long line. Uh, not fun. Okay. All right, now we have a method here called set percentage growth rate. Now, I notice this one's public because we want people to be able to set the growth rate but we don't want them to be, up to be able to manipulate it themselves. We want them to have to go through this method. It's kind of like you should not be able to change my checking account balance without making a deposit or withdrawal. You shouldn't be able to just go in and say, uh, Ken's balance is now $8,000. would be nice. See what I'm saying? You, you wouldn't want... Through the procedure. Right. You have to put money in or take money out. If you just want to change, you have to make some sort of entry. Hey. Yeah, we're going to add money against some we screwed up class or something, you know. In other words, we have to have an accountability for it. You wouldn't want people to be able to just go in, change it. Okay. All right, so for our mouse here, we have a method called set percentage of growth rate, which takes a parameter down here inside this bracket. Okay. Now the parameter is called percentage of growth rate and it's a double. This is very misleading. You notice how we have percentage of growth rate defined up here. So let's see that. Let me let me get my marker going here. So we have percentage of growth rate right here. Right there. There's percentage of growth rate. Everybody see that? We'll also have percentage of growth rate here, here, and here. Okay, we got it four different times. Well, what happens is let me change my color. Where's my where's my pen? Let's give me a. Trying to won't change my color of my pen. No, ink color. <laughs> All right. I'm going to change this guy up here. Hey, hush back there. This guy right here, this blue guy here. See the guy that's got the blue and red line that's perfectly straight? <laughs> All right. Basically, the guy with the red line on the right, now I can't see anything. Okay. The, actually, the guy with the red and the blue, these two work together. This guy is work together as well. Basically, I don't do it this way, okay? But the author does, so I'm going to explain it to you. He uses the same variable name throughout, percentage of growth rate. You can do that. I just don't like it because you could screw it up. He could have said, instead, see where it has this dot right here? If he had left off this dot, this program would not have functioned. Because what would have happened is, since this method is defining a new variable percentage of growth rate, it would have said, oh, okay, yeah, we have the main class variable. That's actually an instance. But inside the method here, we have a new one called percentage of growth rate. And if we did not have this, we would have said percentage of growth rate is equal to percentage of growth rate. So it would have caused an issue. Yes? Question, why, when you take it out from being a private to a public, do you have to reset it as what kind of variable it's going to be? No. If you, you mean at the top there, if the instance variables at the top? I mean up here? Well, it's, you know, it says like private double percent growth rate. Right. And then you have public void right. set percent okay. growth rate to double percent growth rate. It just seems like it's a redundancy that doesn't need to happen. Well, okay, it does need to happen this way. The whole point of this program is, okay, so we have a mouse. So I'm going to give birth to a new mouse. I'm going to create an instance of a mouse. Then, I'm, then for each instance of the mouse or mice, I want to set the percentage that it's going to grow. So they could be different. Mouse one could grow at whatever speed. Mouse 2 could grow to different. So I want to have the ability to set the growth rate. Okay? But I don't want you to be able to just set the growth rate. I want you to go about a proper procedure. An example of something like that could be, maybe I'm doing something to get input for the date. Okay? What's today's date? You want to know? So how will you enter the date? In numbers only. So 3-12-12? Why not 12, 3, 12? But I mean, which way is correct? 3, 12, 12, or 12, 3, 12? Right. Actually, 
no, military would be 12-3-12 for March 3rd, 2012. I think. Well, whatever. I, I've been out so long, I don't remember now. But the whole point is which one's correct. Well, it does depend. So what if we had a method for set date? And that method received the date and made sure we entered in the correct format. Because that's a big deal. 312 or 123 is a big deal. Are we talking March 12th or December 3rd? Hey, December 3rd, dude, we're almost ready to go home. It's Christmas time. It's cold outside. March 3rd is spring break. So it's a big difference. So if we had a method to get the input for the date, Maybe the method could say, whoa, you entered 312. Did you mean March 12th or December 3rd? So you would have a method that you'd want to be public, like this public set or public void set percentage of growth rate. You want a method to receive it so anybody could call it. So I check it in a check, you know, my checking account. Can you all make a deposit in my checking account? Actually, you can. You can. You can very easily deposit money in my checking account. Do you make withdrawals? I would hope not. <laughs> right. So the whole point is anybody can access this. So with a mouse, the whole public means anybody can access it. Now, I don't want you to screw with the growth rate unless you go through the method. So I don't want you to screw with the balance of my checking account unless we go through the proper procedures. Does the bank care what my balance is? They really don't care. All they know is if you want to adjust the balance, you either have to put money in or take money out. You can't just inadvertently change the balance. Okay? But the whole point is he likes in this book here to keep the variable names the same. So if you're receiving the value of percentage of growth rate as an argument to a method, like he does on this slide, he likes to keep the variable name the same. Just for ease of Keeping track of it, I don't. I have never done that. I think it's it's, it's tough. Because I, I always call things like in growth rate, in string, in something. So I know it's something coming in as an argument. And I'll show you examples of mine as well. But we're just going to walk through his first. Okay. But with his, the this dot, okay, this tells it that the percentage of growth rate at the beginning with the red and the blue line underneath it, pertains to the instance variable at the top, okay? So this dot percentage of growth rate on the left is referring to the instance variable at the top. So what that means is we are setting the instance variable with whatever received as an argument, okay? Got that? Kind of, maybe? We're going to see examples of that. We need to call Guinness Book World Records. That's, I think, the longest I've ever spent talking about this one slide. <laughs> you get that documented. All right. We had to go to Sylvan, <laughs> <laughs> to go Sylvan Learning Center <laughs> to learn about <laughs> absolute value we forgot over the weekend. <laughs> <laughs> Wouldn't it be somebody, funny if somebody listened to his works there? They're like, God, he makes us look like a bunch of idiots, but you're good at absolute value. All right, all right, so, all right, let's continue on. The next method now, you notice how we got this one separated out as well. So this method simulates one day of growth for a mouse. So we have another public method called grow, public void grow. So anybody can access it, it's public. Now the void means doesn't return anything. We're going to tell it to grow, but I don't want anything back from you. I don't want no poop or anything, just grow. Okay, all right. So public void growth, no arguments here, okay? Now inside we see this dot weight, so it's the instance variable right here at the top, the weight here at the top. So this dot weight, wow, got that whole plus equals. Does anyone know what that plus equals is called? Come on, someone make me proud. What's that called? Compound operator, Compound operator thank God. Very good, very good. <laughs> What'd she say? Let's Google it. Now, somebody, you know, uh, when I grade your programs, I don't know if you realize that. I always, all I say is, you forgot to use the compound operator or something. And someone reply back, I have no idea what you're even talking about. What is a compound operator? My like, wow. You've obviously been reading the book. I always have been listening to it because I've said, what, 4,000 times at least? All right, so this dot weight. 
plus equals. <laughs> well, I'm referring to you, Terry. <laughs> Did I tell you that? I don't know. No, I was oh, thinking yeah. about cell phone towers. Oh, jeez. <laughs> You're going to go build another cell phone tower? <laughs> yeah, I'm getting never sign. I'm good. <laughs> All right, so this dot weight is equal to this dot weight plus, now we have some parentheses going here, 0 0.01 times this dot percentage of gross rate times this dot weight. Everyone understand how I reworded that? So this dot weight is equal to the current this dot weight plus 0 0.01 times the growth rate that's currently set times this dot weight. So it's all added together into this dot weight. Then we got this dot age plus plus. What's that called? Come on. It's not compound. It's a increment. Man, this guy's good. He's good. He came in late and he got it. Y'all are, are looking pretty bad, just so you know. <laughs> so this dot age means age is going to be incremented by one. So if it was two years old, guess what? Now it's three. If it was zero, it's now one. If it's one, it's now two, so on and so forth. Okay, so everyone understand what growth is going to do. The mouse is going to get a little bit older and a little bit fatter. Well, heavier. We don't have as girth or as diameter or circumference on this thing. But all, right. all right, so now we have another divider. This method prints the mouse's age and weight. Public void display. Another method called display takes no arguments, returns nothing because it's void. But anybody can call it. It's called public. Okay? All right. We have system.out.printf. Now we need some old format specifiers and all that stuff in here. So we have a big long string. Age equals percentage D. What does percentage D mean? Anybody? It's a format specifier for what type of variable? Modulus. Decimal integer. Mm -hmm. Percent D is decimal integer. Remember, with printf, the, without the printf, that would have been modulus. You are correct. With printf, it's just saying, I lost my marker. Where'd my mouse go? Hold on, we got to go look for a mouse. There it is. Found it. Okay. All right. What we're saying, this right here, with, when using printf, this percentage D says, hey, format specifier for a decimal integer. So it's going to take this dot age, take this value, and output it right there. So it's going to say age equals whatever that value is right there. Then a comma. So it's going to be age equals one comma. Weight equals format specifier for a float 0.3. What the heck does all that mean? Come on, anybody? Anybody? It's printf. It's printf, so what's 0.3? Three decimal places. Oh, yeah. Okay. How wide was wide as it needs to be? 0.3 float. So it's going to be the weight is going to be in whatever. 2.001 or something. Oh, lost my page. There it is. All right. And so this here is referring to the weight. This weight is referring to this guy. All right. So our object, let me go back one. So we have a growth, we have a set percentage of growth rate method. We have a grow method and a display method. Now let me go back two slides. And they're right there. Remember the UML diagram? We have set percentage of growth rate. It would receive an argument of double called percentage of growth rate. That's how you read that on the right. Then grow and display both receive no arguments. So that, that's what they look like in UML. This is what it looks like in Java. Isn't that special? Oh. Now we get the public and private. Okay, public and private are called access modifiers. When you when you apply an access modifier to a class, you determine how easy it is for the member to be accessed. So access a member refers to either reading the member's variable, a variable, or value, or setting it. Okay, so how can we manipulate it or even view it? Okay, if you declare it private, it can only be accessed from inside the class. No one outside the class can access this at all. Okay. Instance variable is almost always declared private. Every program you would do for me, they're always declared private. If you declare them public, you're doing something wrong. 
Okay, they are always, 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 always private. Always private. Okay. I always look at people who say, I had to make them public to get it work. Well, then, then you got a problem in your program if you had to make them public. Okay. Okay. It says declare them private because they almost always want the objects to be hidden. Makes the data harder to access is what encapsulation is all about. Okay. Just like in my car, do I really need to know the voltage of my battery and all the other stuff? No. I could care less. It's all hidden from me. All I need to know is things like how fast I'm driving, how much battery is left, that kind of stuff. Okay? All right. So private is what we want. If you declare a member to be public, then it can be accessed from anywhere. Can you imagine if your checking up account balance was public and it just randomly started changing? If it went up, we'd be happy with that. But if it went down, we'd have an issue with that. Okay. So if it's declared to be public, then member can be accessed from anywhere, from within the class or from outside the class. Okay. Methods are usually declared with the public modifier because you want them to be used from anywhere. Methods are public, not variables. Okay. Look back here. See, display and void are both public. The method of set percentage growth rate is public, but the variables are all private. Okay. Everybody see that? All right, here's our driver class. Now you'll notice this program over here, what's missing? What's not there? Hmm. It's one of those things. One of these things is not like the other. No. Slide 13. Slide 13? Actually, there's slide 13 missing. Oh. Well, I'm using the teacher's edition of the slides today. It's hidden for some reason. Is there something on your slide 13? No. No. I don't remember what's on slide 13. This is top secret. You can't look. So close your eyes right now. If you're watching the recording, don't watch. There is no 13. Wow. That is crazy. That's like X-Files kind of crazy. Wow. <laughs> All right. All right, there's no main method. You notice that? We've always had public static void main. There ain't no main. There's no import scanner. There's no nothing. Well, here's our driver class. Oh. Oh. Now we got that whole import scanner thing. Oh, look what we got there. We got a main method as well. So the driver class. This is the driver class for the mouse class. Okay. I do not like that as a comment. A lot of people use that as a comment, and I take off for it. Here is why. Okay. I'm real big on comments just because, you know, I have written programs and I didn't comment them and a year later it's like, what the hell was I thinking? Okay. And the point of comments are, do you know what you're doing? That's the whole point. Well, yeah, it's the driver for it, but what is it doing? Well, it's creating a couple instances of mice. Okay. You know. That's all it would take to say. Yeah, this class creates some instances of mice. Done. What does it do? That's all I want to know. What does this class do? All right. All right. No, just something little. Creates two mice. Whatever. Two instances of mice. All right. So we have our import statement. We know what that is. We have our class statement. We have our main method. Inside there, we're getting a new scanner. We've got a variable called double growth rate. Now, here's something new. We haven't seen this before. We actually have, but we haven't. We've been using variables of type int and float and long and string and care and scanner and all that other stuff. So this right up here, let's read this line. This says, create a new variable called stdin. What type of variable is this? Anybody? It's a scanner. So we got a variable here called Gus. What type of variable is Gus? So if STDIN is a scanner, then Gus is a, it's a mouse. Because the mouse is the new class we just built. It has all the functionality for a mouse. So Gus down, I keep losing my mouse. So Gus is a mouse. Jock here, what, is it, what kind of variable is Jock? He's a mouse as well. 
So, so Gus is the mouse, just like we said, int age equals zero. Mouse, ugh, lost my darn mouse again. Where, there it is. Mouse Gus equals new mouse. So what we're saying is we're a new variable out there. Hey, alert the presses. We're creating a new variable called Gus. It's going to be a new mouse. Uh, it's going to be of type mouse. It's going to be equal to a new mouse. Easy enough. Okay? It's just like saying, I am going to have a child. That would be Mouse Gus. We are going to have a mouse. Then, whoops, I just had a kid would be equal to equals a new mouse. So the left side is the declaration. Then the right side is it's actually happened now. So we have a very we're going to declare a variable called Gus. It's going to be a mouse. So we've gone out. We we built the box for it. We're ready for it. Now we have one. The right hand side is we actually went ahead and did it. Okay. So mouse Jacques means new variable called Jacques of type mouse. Now that's equal to new mouse. So what we did is we went and we took an instance of that mouse class and created one for Gus and one for Jacques. Easy enough? Everybody got it? Everybody with me? Maybe? Hopefully? All right. I was saying entrance, the, the, the enter growth rate as a percentage. So we're out putting that on the screen. Then we're getting growth rate as a double. Okay. Easy enough there. STDIN.next double. Then Gus dot percentage of growth rate. So Gus is the object, just like name dot something or whatever the variables we were using before. Gus dot set percentage of growth rate says from the instance of the mouse class called Gus, call the method set percentage of growth rate and pass it the growth rate. So we got input for growth rate. And we passed it as an argument to the set percentage growth rate method that pertains to the Gus instance. Then we say Jacques dot set percentage of growth rate. So they're both growing now. Then we say Gus dot grow. So the Gus instance is now going to grow by a day. The Jacques instance is going to grow by a day. Then Gus is going to grow again. Then we output it. We're going to get the output for each one. Let's actually do this and see what it does. Okay. I'm going to go here. I'm going so to. So you give it two days for Gus? Yep. One's older than the other. Okay. <clears throat> All right. I'm going to copy this real quick. Okay. I need a new. Let's see. Hold on. New text document. Oh, who cares about the Java? There's too many darn Java updates. Man, someone's hiding my... Hold on. Ah. Sorry, I forgot we moved classrooms, didn't we? So I'm hiding these darn file extensions. Okay, this is going to be called mouse driver.java. No, this is just mouse, wasn't it? Okay, I'm going to put all that in there. Here's the mouse class. And then I'm going to get this stuff. Okay, we're going to save it. I want a new one. Now let's get the mouse driver. I'm just saving myself some typing is all I'm doing. Whoa, and we know why that one's all pretty and that one's not. Is class? Right, I want, this one's actually a Java file. This one ain't nothing yet. I'm going to save it. Save it on my desktop. In Java. Yep. Oh, yeah, look at it up ready. Lyman's off a little, but that's okay for this. Okay, I'm going to compile this. Man, my thumb is killing me. All right, I'll compile. Let's see what happens. Enter the growth rate, 0 0.01. So age equals 2, weight equals 1. 
Let's see what that is. Well, I'm going to go back to the drive. Remember we did, we talked about all this. Then Gus grew by one. Then Jock grew by one. Then Gus grew again. Then we displayed Gus and displayed Jock. Y'all remember that? Let me make this bigger so the people in the cheap seats can see it. Oh, it's already big. Is that big already? Yeah, that's big. Oh, okay. I guess it is. All right. Okay. All right. So this this first display statement here. So this first one's Gus, the second one's Jock. Well, let's make them grow again. If I can get my, where's my darn mouse? Something, something happened. There we go, now we're back. All right. I want Gus to grow two more times. How old should Gus be now? Gus is four. Well, all right. Now let's see the real nice thing about all this. Okay. So this is our mouse class over here. See all this stuff pertaining to our mice, all that? That's quite a bit of work. But you know what? I want another mouse. Let me give me another mouse. This mouse is going to be called Mickey. I want Mickey. I spell the right. Is there an E in Mickey? Good. I don't want to infringe on copyright, so this is not the Mickey you're looking for. This is not the Mickey you're looking for. <laughs> <laughs> At least you got that. I did. Alright, so I created a third mouse up here. There's a new mouse. I alerted the news media I'm creating a new mouse. It is not the mouse you're looking for. Okay. It's equal to a new mouse. Alright. Then I set the percentage of growth rate for that mouse. But my mouse is cool. He's going to grow twice as fast. He is on steroids. Then he's going to grow three times. So how old is Mickey going to be? Three days. But each day he's going to be growing exponentially larger because he's getting 20 times heavier each day. <laughs> All right, so let's, let's, let's see what happens here. 0 0.01. So which one's Mickey? How come the weights are the same? I didn't tell it to display Mickey, all right? Well, let's tell it to display Mickey then. Does that work? See how easy I can add a new mouse and call the new method without having to write it all? Wow. Mickey is seriously larger. <laughs> Point <laughs> zero one. All right, five percent. That better. <laughs> now we can see the Mickey. Mickey's a fat mouse. <laughs> this, is mouse <laughs> this is not the mouse you're looking for. All right. All right. Ever see how that works? So the, the nice thing about this object-oriented is we created this mouse class here, and I can just create a new one each time. Oh, new mouse, new mouse, new mouse. And you know what? I want to give these mice some names. They need a name. Private. What kind of variable would a name be? String. We'll set it to nothing. I'm going to create a method for it. I'm going to leave the comments out because I just want to do this for the uh, public. Void set name. This dot name equals. Here's the way I like doing it. 
I always do that. See, I always call it like in name. That way the names don't get confused down here. If I do that, I can actually leave this off. And it's going to work. I can make a method to return it. Actually, you know, I'll, I won't do it. I'll just go down here into display. And I'll say, okay, I need to, I got to say name equals a format specifier. And what type is name? Okay, done. Let's compile this baby. Oh, we gotta give him a name, don't we? And we'll call it down here. We're gonna say Mickey dot set name not the mouse. You. <laughs> we'll call it. Ooh, now it might be the mouse we're looking for. So there we go. I call it set name for all of them. Let's see what happens. Enter the growth rate. Actually, they're going to grow by 5%. So I could edit it all in one place. And I didn't have to rewrite the display method three times. And rewrite three name, set name methods. It just did it. Everybody see how nice that was? Yeah. Mickey's getting fat. He's going to diet. Exactly. You know, he's down to Disney. He's eating all that stuff. All right. So, everybody okay on how that works? Got a general idea of object oriented? Okay. Um, <clears throat> Go ahead. The, next, the one when you did the set name, you, you spelled it J A C. What was that for? I just spelled it different. It doesn't just, matter. It don't matter. Because I was passing a string to it. <clears throat> I, I could have called him J A K. Because whatever name I gave it is what it's displaying. Okay. Yeah, I could have called it the same. So it could be like a nickname too. Right, it could be a nickname, okay. exactly. Yeah. And really in here we're calling the objects Mickey, Jacques, and Gus. We could just as easily call them mouse one, mouse two, mouse three. Okay. Because okay. really the object, you know, when I'm getting a car built. This I was going to call and order me a car. When that car was being put into production, would it, would it be relabeled as Ken Dewey's car? No, it would be car called car number whatever serial number. It would still, you know, here he just happened to come up with names for the instances, but you could have called them anything you wanted. It could have been mouse one, mouse two, mouse three, mouse whatever. And I just made it a method called set name to give it some more functionality, that's all. Okay with that? Everybody kind of got that? I think we're going to call it quits there. Yeah. So we're going to pick up on 18 next time. All right. Hope you enjoyed it. Uh, Wednesday we're going to continue. And at the rate we're going, we're not going to finish it in one week. Maybe I'll talk real fast next time. All right. Yes. I mean, we got to call Guinness on that one.